Hello, and welcome to Earhorn. Today, we're looking at some of the best posts from r slash pro revenge with a guest post from r slash nuclear revenge. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more. Now let's get into this juicy vengeance. Neighbors sued me after harassing my dog for months and lost horribly. Several commenters telling me that you guys would enjoy this story. About six or seven months ago, my neighbor got a drone. I don't mind people having hobbies, but for some reason he insisted on flying like the biggest jerk possible. He would hover in front of other houses and windows, try to race cars going down the road, and worst of all, he had a habit of flying his drone in my fenced backyard buzzing over my dog, diving low just over my dog's head before circling around to do it again. My dog isn't small, he's about 70 pounds and a Malamute, but the drone terrified him and I was worried what would happen if it hit him. I asked my neighbor several times to please not fly in my yard and explain that it was scaring my dog. He basically told me to get lost and laughed in my face. When it still continued, I called the police. Unfortunately, there wasn't much they could do other than ask him to please not fly over my house slash property. Finally, in late December, it happened. My dog got tired of his crap and managed to catch the drone right as it was diving towards him. He shredded the drone, and the thing was just a jumbled mess of wires and plastic. The neighbor was pissed. He stormed over to my house, swearing and threatening me, which I ignored. A week later, I got a summons to small claims court. He wanted $900 for the cost of his drone, and an additional $300 for supposedly denying him access to his property. The drone sat in my yard for a couple of hours before it was retrieved. He could have killed my dog. I don't have kids or a girlfriend, I just have my dog who is my best friend for the past seven years. That dog has moved with me three times, was there when I graduated college, saw me buy my first house and my first car. I love my dog. So I went to legal advice and got some great help from them. Turns out him suing me was the best thing to ever happen. When we got to small claims court, the judge basically laughed away his claims that I had intentionally trained my dog to attack his drone. But little did he know, I was prepared. I had dozens of photos of my yard showing it was impossible for him to accidentally fly that low to my dog, videos of him harassing my dog in the past, and I had saved all my medical bills from taking my dog to the vet. $700 for an x-ray? Check. Another $250 to sedate him during? Why not? Don't want him to be uncomfortable. Full dental exam with tooth cleaning slash repair? $400. Then there was the cost of anti-anxiety meds and a secondary checkup, wet food for a week in case his teeth were hurt, and extra just for good measure. In the end, the butthole ended up owing me almost $2,000 and now is being investigated by the FAA for not having a registered drone and violating several FAA regulations concerning drone flight. Too near an airport, too close to other people, out of sight of operator, and way above the maximum altitude. Enjoy never being allowed to fly drones again, dick. This story is from r slash nuclear revenge. It is called, Like Wrecking Mailboxes, Have Fun With Two Broken Arms. Posting on mobile, so sorry for formatting issues. I live in a rural part of New Zealand, where it's easy to get rowdy on the weekend slash Friday night as there's little to no police presence. This story took place a fair few years ago, so I can only remember what my father told me about what happened. But basically, in the area there is a house full of young adults, bogans, some might say. Bogans equals rednecks. All the bogans have either big trucks and utes or old crappy sports cars that are modded to go fast. And when the story took place, there was like 10 of them, so Friday and weekend nights could get pretty loud when they raced around the few country roads in the area. Now, I don't know how they came up with this idea, but I assume that they had been on the piss when they first tried it. What did they do? They hogtied a freaking log to the front of one of their older trucks and went around ramming all the mailboxes. Now my dad wasn't too mad the first time, in fact he did marvel at how they managed to get a whole log onto the front of the truck and still get a decent speed going. To this day, we still have no clue, but after the second and third time he got pretty mad. So after the third time, he said, F it, and went to Mitre 10, like a home improvement store and bought a great big thick solid metal pole and proceeded to paint the first half meter of it brown so it looked like wood, attach the mailbox on top and bury the last 10 meters of it into the ground. 
pulling the bottom of this down with another half meter of concrete. He never does things by halves, LMAO. He spent Monday and Tuesday working on it, and then we waited until Friday. Friday came, but instead of the satisfaction of a wrecked car on the top of the drive, we just got races going up and down the road. Fast forward 24 hours, and we hear loud engines around 10 p.m., and a crash, and another. At this point, they're running over mailboxes further up the road, and then the biggest boom you've ever heard, and then screaming. My father ran up to the top of the drive and had to call an ambulance and a tow truck. Our mailbox was where the handbrake was, essentially breaking the front of the car in half, completely killing the modded out engine and wrecking the car. Not only that, but as the car had come to a complete stop, the driver had broken both his arms on the steering wheel and the passenger in the front seat had gotten a concussion. After the police and ambulance had arrived, we learned that everyone in the car was so drunk it was a miracle they were hitting mailboxes and not trees or power lines, meaning that the driver got a hefty drunk driving job done on him, as well as destruction of property, speeding, and I think a few other things, as he was wanted for a fight that had happened a few weekends ago in the pub as he was caught out by security footage. They never ran over mailboxes again. Back to r slash pro revenge, this story is called Guy Quit His Job Thinking He Became Rich. Hey, new to Reddit, I thought I would post my story here. I work for a construction company and we do remodeling on homes. We have a rule here that we get to keep anything we find hidden behind the walls. We hired this guy, we really needed a worker badly, who was a total a-hole from day one. I've been working for this company for five years, and this guy has only been doing construction for one year after he got fired from his accounting job for getting a DUI. Anyways, he would always make fun of my clothes and my accent, and one day he went too far by telling my boss about my private Instagram account pics. He got on my phone and looked through my Instagram page and showed my boss pictures of me smoking weed. Little did he know that my boss is my friend from eight years when we used to smoke together before we both quit. I was so mad that he violated my privacy that I made a plan to screw him over. He was the kind of guy who would always come in late and complain that trains or traffic is why he was always late. One day, I overheard him saying that if he won the lottery, he would quit this job for not getting the respect he deserves. You have to earn your respect here. One day, I bought some fake gold coins online and I put them in a metal box I found at the antique store and waited for a chance to hide it in a wall. Luckily, I did not have to wait long. The day he found the coins, it seemed like it was his best day ever. The first thing he did when he opened the box, called my boss an effing loser and he quit immediately on the spot. He said, F this place, I'm rich, lol. Little did he know was that that was the best day of my life. After he quit, my boss told us that he was going to fire him anyways for always showing up late. Wish I could see the look on his face when he finds out the gold coins are fake. Best $40 I spent in my life. Our last story is a little bit longer, but oh boy is it a good one. It's called, Can't You Just Unload Around Me? So this happened earlier today and was too perfect not to share with you guys. I work in construction as the foreman for a new house build. The location is kind of strange. The house is 250 feet up a hill via a footpath only. All of our materials have to come up this footpath by hand. It's a pain in the butt to manually carry, quite literally, an entire house up this hill. One of our saving graces is having the two parking spots on the street at the bottom of this hill marked with official no parking signs. Unfortunately, there's an elementary school about half a block away and the parents of children seem to regularly, at least twice a day, think it's okay to park in our spots. Now I consider myself a reasonable person, so if someone is parked in the spots and we don't have a delivery or need to park a truck, I will let it go. If we need the spots and there's someone parked there, however, I will ask them to move nicely, and most of the time, they do so immediately. Until today. I get a phone call from the lumber delivery truck that is en route to our location. He says he'll be there in about two or three minutes. I let him know I will meet him at the street and make sure he has a space to park. He's carrying all the material to frame the roof of our house, which is a lot of really big lumber and will take easily an hour to bring up the hill. So naturally, I didn't want him parked in the middle of the street with his hazards on for an hour when we have a perfectly good parking spot for him. As I begin my trip down the hill, I notice there is a school parent sitting in her car idling. Assuming she's waiting to pick up her child, I walk up to her car and politely let her know that she is parked in a no parking zone and we really need her to clear it to park a delivery truck. 
She scoffs at me and rudely states back, I'll just be a few minutes, and your truck isn't here, so take a chill pill, dude. Before I can respond, a giant lumber truck comes around the corner and I wave to him, and then gesture towards him to the woman in the car who has now put her window back up to ignore me. I put on my best customer service smile and wave at her through the window. She put it down halfway and angrily shouts, What? By now, the truck has pulled up alongside her car and I politely ask her again, with a stronger tone of voice, to move her vehicle, reminding her that she is illegally parked in a towaway zone. Then she gives me this wonderful idea. She says, Can't you guys just unload around me? Jeez, it's not that hard. I give her another smile and walk away, a brilliant plan forming in my head. I instruct the delivery driver to park as closely to her as possible and block her in with the porta potty that is at one end of our reserve spots and the parked car that is parked just adjacent to our spots on the other end. He smiles because he immediately gets what I'm trying to do and proceeds to expertly block this lady and her car into a little two parking spot jail. We unstrap the lumber and my guys begin humping material up the hill. Meanwhile, I call the police parking enforcement to let them know the situation. At this point in time, I wasn't trying to get her in trouble, I just wanted a record of why we were blocking part of the street so we don't get in trouble with the city. The very friendly traffic officer lets me know that she can be there in about 30 minutes and deal with the situation for me. Wonderful. As we continue to unload lumber, the child of the parent shows up, and wouldn't you know it, mom is just now realizing that the lumber truck is parked so close that she can't get out her driver door to meet her kid. She awkwardly clambers across the inside of her car and stumbles out the passenger door, shooting glaring looks at me and the truck driver in the process. She loads her kid into the back and then begins to realize that she has no way of leaving. She comes storming up to myself and the driver and states, I'm in a big hurry, you need to move your damn truck right now so I can go. Before I can respond, the driver gets a grin on his face and says, ma'am, in order to unload the lumber on the truck, we had to unstrap it, and per our company policy, I'm not allowed to move the truck with any unsecured load on it. Sorry. This sends her into near aneurysm levels of blood pressure. Meanwhile, I can barely contain my laughter. Screw your policy, I have somewhere to be. He barks back at him. At this point, with impeccably convenient timing, the parking enforcement officer shows up and parks behind the truck. He doesn't see the officer arrive while the officer is still getting out of her vehicle. I just casually say, can't you just pull around it? It's not that hard. With the biggest grin I've ever had, I watch as she realizes that I just used her line on her. Screw you, she yells and storms back to her car and angrily clambers back in through the passenger door and into the driver's seat. At this point, the officer is walking up to myself and the driver. Before she can even introduce herself, the mom in the car slams it into reverse and stomps on the gas, crashing into our porta potty and knocking it over, and then throws the car into drive and tries to mount the curb and drive on the sidewalk. The officer, driver, and I are staring in disbelief as she gets halfway over the curb and gets stuck. I can hear her screaming obscenities over the idling truck from inside her car. The officer promptly walks up to the door of the car and orders her out. My favorite part of the entire thing is watching her face go to shock as she realized she just did all of that in front of a police officer. She gets slapped in cuffs as the parking officer calls for a second unit and she is promptly sat on the very curb she tried to drive over. She sits there on the curb yelling at the now two officers about how we told her she could stay there and that we never asked her to move traffic officer responds that she was the one who was originally called when she first refused to move and that she already knows what's going on. While myself and the driver are giving a report to the second officer, my guys finish moving the remainder of the lumber and the driver finishes his statement and takes off to go back to the yard. By the end of the ordeal, she was arrested, charged with child endangerment. Her kid was in the back of the car the whole time. Reckless driving, destruction of property, porta potty, and driving on a suspended license. On top of all that, she also got her car towed. The kid went home with his grandma, and she went to spend some quality time in a cell. I never expected her to actually heed my advice to just pull out around it, but I think next time she'll probably think twice about parking in a towaway zone, if she ever gets a license again. I love that last story. It kind of has a malicious compliance vibe to it, because they just kind of let her do what she want, and she did this to herself. Do you have a good revenge story you want to share? Let us know in the comments below.
you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more. See you next time.